Okay, we've got a great little routine here, and this is a little bit different. So you just need to understand completely what we're trying to achieve, and then you understand the benefits of it and everything as well. So we're after a late hit, and this is to, for you to understand your full reach um, capabilities. So it's not about trying to get the drop and get the drop early and really hustle up the front. It's about understanding how much time you've got, staying back, and then using a full step lunge and practice your full step lunge. And the reason for that is that you um, need the time to actually cover this down the drive and the cross court drive. So my outcomes for the first one were the late hit, eight out of nine, and the floor first. So we're dropping to the floor first, and I'll explain that in a sec. Six out of nine. All right, so you'll see that uh, we have a fake swing at the back, and then it's a lunge, a big lunge. I'm trying to hang back and wait till the ball's almost hit the front wall before I even go. So that really makes it tough on the timing. So you'll wait there, and I'll show it in slow motion a little bit later. But that's that last minute second lunge, that last second lunge that I want with full extension and the reach on full extension when I hit. So it takes a little bit, but once you get hold of it, it allows you to stay back further in the court, knowing your expectations or your understanding of what you're capable of. And so therefore, as I said, you can cover the volley and you can cover the drive down the wall or whatever. So um, it really makes a difference. So, and this is really quite good fun. This didn't even knock me around that much, even though this is the end of a training session because your body just gets used to it. So that's quite amazing. A uh, late hit, nine out of 10. That's when the ball's going down, hopefully close to the floor. And floor first on the drop, six out of 10 for me. Right, Mary was number 14 in the world at one stage, and she's pretty phenomenal. She's a competitive beast, and um, she's still having a fair old go right now, she, although she doesn't normally take the ball late. And so what happens is she's used to taking the ball really early and getting in there in a really comfortable situation. So she's trying to um, stress herself a little bit. So it's taken her a tick just to get used to the rising ball, or the late ball, sorry. And so this is now she, she's clued in on it, and now it gets good. So what happens as soon as she's worked out her movement and she's understood her differences, her capabilities, look at that, it's just phenomenal. And so now she can stay back and know that she's going to come in and play a quality drop. That's the answer is a quality drop off the outcome. So look at that. So the last four have been awesome. And that's pretty solid and really good. The last one she just didn't get hold of. Outcomes eight out of nine on the late hit and floor first six out of nine. And that's pretty good. So she'd be really quite happy with it, I would think. So from the side on, you can see a little bit more. She did this one before the other one, by the way, because the camera was already set up. So you'll see a lot of um, uh, the late hit hadn't really clicked in. So she's still trying to work it out. But um, so that's why the second set was much better. I put the second set on first, just so they were um, flowing for what I did first. And um, yeah, so she's doing really, really well. She's got to get that little push forward on full extension. And we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So it's just an amazing effort. She goes on her left foot, I go on my right foot, and I go on my right foot because my hitting arm is on that side. And um, it just, it's whatever you'd like the best, but I think you can reach further with your right foot out. Uh, Mary's outcome, seven out of 11 on a late hit, and six out of 11 on the floor. Okay, I'll show you uh, different shots of mine just so you can understand what we're talking about and the benefits of what we do. Okay, the full extension, the ball, I'll just go back a bit. So the ball will be going in a downward direction and reaching. So I've said that that one is not full extension. It's not a late hit. And so even though the ball was still going down toward the floor, I'm calling that not a late hit. So once again, when we come up to this one now, we start to get better. This would be a later hit. And the outcome we're after is hopefully the floor first. Now the reason for the floor first is the ball then moves into the side wall. You go over hit this and it goes into the um, floor uh, front wall then side wall it comes back into the middle of the court. Uh, it's a little bit jumpy at the moment but this should be quite a good shot. I'll just go clip by clip. Here we go. Okay so real stress at the moment. And last minute lunge, full extension, there just on the end of the racket. So you use every little bit of your racket as well. And you'll notice that uh, arm is virtually out straight. There's virtually no swing. And then you just ease it up with that little, I'll see how I drop my wrist. So I'll drop my wrist and pull it back in to allow the racket to just flick it up a little bit. That gives you height in the ball. So I'll pull my wrist back towards my, my heel, which also gives me balance and so on as well. 
So the outcome, you see this, it's pretty good. Really low on the floor, really difficult to get back. So it's pretty cool. So what happens is, I'll talk about the feet just quickly. Hopefully it won't be too jumpy, we'll go. Okay. So what happens here, I will stay back. I'm waiting till the ball hits the front wall before I really lunge forward. And then I'll get my left foot and I'll land it and stay full extension and go from there. Possibly not the best one to show you. Um, sometimes I'll put a little hop in just to go and resettle my back foot in the right spot. So now I'm really quite far back. So now I'm, so I'm miles back. Mary's already played the shot. I haven't really moved. I'm staying back fairway, waiting for the ball to hit the front wall. So I'm not trying to get in there too early. Um, I don't mean that you should be doing this in a match, but I would need you to understand your capability. That's the biggest one. So I want you to know that from all the way back here, from all the way back here, that you can go all the way up there with one step. So you go one step there. So from here, it's a left foot plant and it's a right foot lunge with a full extension lunge from right back near the, near the service line. So, and if you can develop that capability, you then not become invincible, but it means that you've got all these options um, to just time the hit of the ball and get yourself out of trouble. If you get off the ball early, you've got then the little boast. You've also got a flick down the wall. You've got a cross-court flick and you've got a lift lob, which works really well. But you can choose to use this if you need to use this. And often what happens is you'll camp on somebody. Camping means that you might stay back here and you'll wait for the drive down the wall or you'll wait for the cross-court. And um, if they don't do it and it surprises you, you're putting the drop, then you've got an option to go with a quick little drop. And then you're sitting behind them again off a really short drop because you can play a feather drop. So this is a really quite a short drop. And I'm putting the ball back in. It will come back to around about the same position. So there won't be much on the drop as well. So that's the other component that works really well. That just goes really, really quite well. See that I'll pull my wrist back. See how I'll pull my wrist back. So that gets that little flick of the racket. I've gone a little bit high on that one. But that's how it all works. Um, then it got a bit tough for me, so I'll just move up here. Um, if you look at the full extension ones, I'll go through each of the full extension ones. That's really interesting to look at. So that's pretty comfortable. That one's reasonably comfortable. When we talk about comfort, we talk about how low you are to your, your chest, to your knee. So if I look at that, and I'll go, wow, now I'm under stress. That's under stress when your chest is near your knee. So that's really starting to get under stress. That one's not too bad. That one's pretty comfortable. That one's stressful. Once again, left hand starts to go on the floor for three-point location. Three-point location. When we talk about three-point location, it is one, two, and three left, left hand on the floor. That gives you full balance of complete everything. So it goes really neatly if you choose to do that. Um, next one, that one's under a little bit of stress, this one, that was a little bit awkward, so I've turned my racket as well to get the angle in as well, so now I'm starting to work on angle as well as um, the reach, that's a lot of stress there as well, see so the left hand first here on the floor, three point location, full extension, and uh, wrist out, no backswing, everything working hard. And here, not quite as much stress. And there, not quite as much stress, not too bad. All right, so the outcomes that you get, if you, I'll show you the, couple, the best ones. So it should be these here. So we'll have a look at these. So it's late hit floor first. See that? That's just amazing as in how it works. So if I go again, because it took a tick for it to fire up. Okay, hopefully it'll run now. It's just a bit jumpy. There it is there. All right, and we'll show you these ones. This first one I'll miss. It's all right. Here we go. There, look at that. See how much it dies into the side wall? I'm trying to push it into the side wall so it gets really tough when your opponent wants to strike it. So those are outcomes. If we have a look at the outcomes. 
Yeah. Here's the shot. And the ball is just edged up. I'll put my racket back into my leg. Ball's pretty safe in. See how soft it is? It gives you the ability to play a soft drop so you can finish it short on someone. And it's bouncing in towards the side wall. So at point of impact, when Mary was trying to hit it, it would have been quite difficult for her. And then we'll go to the next one. And you think this is really difficult, but you get used to it after a while and you become really confident and really capable. So I'll pull back. I've got, now this one's interesting because it's going down towards the front wall. If you can get the ball to drop downward toward the front wall when it hits the front wall, then what happens is that it basically dies and it doesn't come back towards the center of the court very much. So you can, that's what that little flick does, that little flick that I do with my racket. Now that's almost a perfect shot because you'd have to hit the wall to get it back. So I'll just go through this one, this is the last little bit. So here we go. There's a little hop that I do at the back just to get in a line. Now I'm going to flick it up a little bit. So the ball's really starting to go down. So now I'm going to lift it up. So I'll pull my wrist down as I take the racket head up. And therefore, really soft hands. And the ball will just pop in. Pretty safe to get it in. I really um, made sure that went in. But it's still a very, very good shot. And it still finishes very, very short. So there you go. It's pretty cool. It's a wonderful skill to have. If you can um, master it, it's just a wonderful thing. And uh, it really makes a difference to the quality of your um drop and how far you can actually stay back and how much work you do when you do the work and um, you'll find it's really comfortable to do and even return off it because you can just come back see how I'm returning I'm trying to get out of there quick as well and it's really not that difficult once you get used to it so your back foot should come in once you lunge and then you can resettle and then off you go so it works really really quite well such a good routine and do this in really short bursts don't over hit this is why we're only doing 10, 10 or so hits and um, that way you don't overwork muscles and so on. So great little exercise. Pop this into your training and have a crack at it because I reckon you'll absolutely love it. It's just such good fun as well. And um, you can just swap over and let the other person have a go when you have a rest.